In this lesson, we're going to focus on re-engaged networks, particularly the calculation of the optimal number of re-engaged stations, and then in this topic, we'll recall some concepts in statistics, and then for the solutions, I will show you how you can perform the process efficiently with Microsoft Excel, and I'll also show you how you can use your calculators to solve these types of problems. Now first, we have our core formulas. Now for the optimal number of stations, we have this formula. N is equal to CV over epsilon quantity squared. Now N here is the optimal number of stations and then epsilon is the allowable degree of error in the estimate of the mean rainfall. Now this is usually 10%. However, if the allowable degree is given, let's say 12%, you will actually use that value. And then our CV is the coefficient of variation of the rainfall values at the existing M stations. So M is actually the number of existing re-engaged stations. And then here, to calculate CV, we have 100 multiplied by the sample standard deviation. Now again, take note of this. This is the sample standard deviation. This is not the population standard deviation. And so that's why we are using M minus 1. Because we will not be using the total number of samples here. Because in our calculation, for the denominator, we'll use M minus 1, not M. So this is something you should note. And then BARD P is just the mean precipitation or the average of the data set. And so to better understand understand this, we will try to solve a problem. Now for our problem, we have a catchment that has 6 re-engaged stations and then in a year, the annual rainfall recorded by the gauges are given above. This is our data set. And then for a 10% error in the estimation of the mean rainfall, we have to calculate the optimum number of stations in the catchment. Now this 10% error, this is our epsilon. And then we are given the following choices, in which A is 7 stations, B is 6, and so on. And so we'll first try to solve this problem using Microsoft Excel. Now let's just take a screenshot, and then let's try to solve this problem here. Now what you want to do first is to outline these values using a column. So we have stations, now let me just change the font. We have stations A, B, C, D, E, and F. And so here, we're gonna outline our data. So we have the rainfall measured in CM. We actually have the following values. We have 82.6, 102.9, 180.3, 11.5, 98 98.8, and we have 136.7. So summing up all of these, we have Let's use the sum function, or you can just actually use auto sum, highlight the values, and then press auto sum. And so to get the average, we have to divide this by the number of data. So we now have 711.6 divided by, since we have 6 stations, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this is divided by 6. So this is now our BARD P, or the mean precipitation. However, this is the long process. What you can do to make this more efficient is you can actually use another function. So let's just move this. You can use average and then you can highlight these data. And so you now have 118.6 without the hassle of dividing by n. And so next, we'll include in our table this function, the precipitation at a specific station minus BARD P. So we have P minus P average or this one. This is for our third column. So we have this value minus this value. And then we're gonna put a dollar sign before the letter and before the number. So that once we drag this down, it will always reference this cell and it will not move down because our BARD P is actually constant. So press enter and then drag this down up to here. We now have P minus BARD P. Now for the next column, we have P minus uh, this one, P minus P average and then squared. So we now have uh, these values, we'll square this. So this is now squared. And then let's drag this down. We now have the following. And then highlight these information and then press auto sum. So we now have this. And then for M or the number of stations, we'll just actually count whatever is in here. Uh, let's just actually use count A. Press enter. We now have six. And then this is this value. And then to get the sample standard deviation, we need to apply this formula. So this is now, I'll just write it. This is sigma m minus 1. This is equal to the square root of this value, uh, this summation, over m minus 1. So this is 6137.92 divided by, our m is 6. And so this is 6 minus 1. And so let's just merge this. This is now the square root 
of this value divided by m minus 1. Be careful of the parentheses because for the denominator, m minus 1 is a whole expression. And so that's why you need to enclose it in a parenthesis. And so we now have 35.036. And so calculating CV, we have 100 times this value divided by BARD P. And so this is now 100 times this value over BARD P, which is this one. So we now have 29.54. And then to solve n, we need to apply this formula. So this is n equals CV, which is 29.54 divided by epsilon, which is in percent. Now again, our epsilon is equal to 10%, this value. So this is over 10. And then take note that these are in percent. And so that's why you don't have to make this point 0.1. And so this is squared. So this is now this value over epsilon, which is 10. Now we can just actually make another cell. We have epsilon equal to 10, so this is this value over this value, and then squared. So we now have 8.73. However, since the number of stations cannot be a decimal, you need to round up. And so what we can actually do here, uh, because this will actually become 9 stations, to do this automatically, just put ceiling, and then for significance, input 1, because we need to round up in multiples of 1. So this is now 9. Just use the ceiling function. However, there's actually a more efficient way to get the sample standard deviation. Uh, by the way, this is our answer. Now what if you got it wrong somehow and then you actually use the population standard deviation. And so if you forgot to subtract 1, you will actually have another answer. It will now be 8 stations. And so this is why you have to be careful. So this is now 9. But the more efficient way to get this value is to just use the standard deviation function in Excel. Now to do that, uh, this is actually our alternative just type in stdev uh, this one and then highlight the data set so highlight this and then you have 35.03 now let's try to check if we actually use the population if you use the population standard deviation we have 6137.92 over 6 this will give us 31.98 now what if you need this value in your code just add P to the standard deviation. So if you'll add P, you'll actually get the population standard deviation. This is what P stands for. So press enter, you can get 31.98. However, since we need the sample standard deviation, just remove this. And so this is now your shortcut. You don't actually need to go over this process. Now, if you want to obtain this value using your calculator, you can go to mode and then press stat and then press one. Once you have this, you can input the data set. So we have 82.6 and then 102.9 and then 180.3 110.3 98.8 and 136.7 once you have input all the values press ac and then this is what's going to happen and then after which press shift and then one or shift stat to go into stat so press one and then press variance so this is four and then here you have n which is the number of samples Bart x which is our mean, sigma x which is our population standard deviation, and then sx which is our sample standard deviation. And so if we will press n, you will actually get 6. Uh, by the way, once you press a function, always press equals right after. And so if you want to get the mean, press 2, and then press equals, you will get 118.6. And then press shift 1, go to 4 again. And then if you will press the population standard deviation, you will get 31.98. However, since we want the sample standard deviation, once you press shift 1 and then 4, you need to go to SX. So press 4. This is how we can get 35.04 using our calculators. Now for Canon calculators, I will also show you how you can use this. So the process will be the same. You need to go to mode and then stat. And then what you will pick here is... SD. So press 1 and then let's input the values 82.6, 102.9, 180.3, 110.3, and then 136.7. Now press CA and then once you have this, you need to press apps. This is where it will differ. So press apps and then you need to go to SVAR which is number 5. So press 5 and then you now have this. This is the number of samples, this is the mean, and this is the sample standard deviation. Well, this is the population standard deviation. And so to get your answer, you need to go to 4. So press 4. This is now your sample standard deviation. And then once you have this, you can just easily substitute the values in these remaining steps. And so you should get 9 stations.
Thank you.